okay so uh, let's start uh, let's continue from the previous class and we had started uh, the class for module 4 which was which is related to uh, digital electronics portion okay so today we will see some uh, uh, binary arithmetic that how can we do how can we perform the binary arithmetics like binary addition subtraction multiplication and division okay some of them we will see uh, today and some uh, we will we will see in uh, future classes okay so i will start with the first topic binary addition okay uh, there are some rules that in binary in digital 0 plus 0 is 0 0 plus 1 is 1 1 plus 0 is 1 and 1 plus 1 is 2 but 2 is decimal 2 is decimal so and uh, and uh, uh, in binary 2 is actually equal to 1 0 so 1 plus 1 is actually 1 0 ok so we can have some examples like 1 0 which is actually 2 in decimal if I add with 1 1 which is actually 3 in decimal I should get a 5 ok so 1 plus 0 is 1 1 plus 1 is uh, 0 with a carry coming here 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 and it comes here so this is 101 one, which is actually equal to 5 right you can have one more example like uh, 111 one, one, which is actually equal to 7 in decimal and I want to add this with 1101 uh, one, one. and what is 1101 one, one? this is 13 in decimal I want a 20 right I'm writing these uh, decimal numbers within bracket for your convenience students uh, you need not write these in your in your uh, examination okay one plus one is one zero that is zero and carry comes here again one plus one plus zero is zero carry will come here one plus one plus one is three three is one one so one and carry of one here one plus one is one zero so you calculate this will come out to be twenty one zero one zero zero okay so this binary addition is similar to uh, decimal addition uh, similarly we can add two negative numbers also so for example I want to add minus one zero with the uh, uh, minus uh, let's say one zero one zero zero one one okay minus is symbolic sign here we know that this minus is uh, represent represented by the bit itself so this will result in 10101 okay and uh, which is minus 21 okay now the next is binary subtraction subtraction ok the rules are 0 minus 0 is equal to 0 1 minus 0 is equal to 1 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 and 0 minus 1 is equal to what equal to 1 with a borrow of 1 with a borrow of 1 so this is actually uh, equivalent to saying that this is 1 0 minus 1 which is actually equal to 1 ok so borrow comes and sit here borrow will come and sit here ok right so 0 minus 1 is actually 1 with a borrow of 1 so this is the rule so we can have some examples so uh, let's say that I want to subtract uh, 
वन ज़ीरो वन वन ना आई वॉन्ट सब्सट्रैक्ट लेट से वन ज़ीरो ज़ीरो वन फ्राम वन ज़ीरो वन वन दिस इज़ एक्चुअली इक्वल टू एलेवन दिस इज नाइन सो आई वॉन्ट रिजल्ट ऑफ टू हेयर लेट सी वन माइनस वन इज ज़ीरो वन माइनस वन ज़ीरो इज वन ज़ीरो माइनस ज़ीरो इज ज़ीरो वन माइनस वन इज ज़ीरो सो विच इज़ एक्चुअली इक्वल टू टू दिस इज करेक्ट नेक्स्ट वी कैन टेक लेट से आई वॉन्ट टू सब्सट्रैक्ट माइनस वन वन फ्राम वन वन ज़ीरो ओके दिस इज सिक्स एंड दिस इज थ्री आई वॉन्ट थ्री ज़ीरो माइनस वन शुड बी वन विद बारो ऑफ वन सो इट विल टेक अ बारो ऑफ वन फ्राम हेयर दिस विल बिकम ज़ीरो एंड दिस विल बिकम वन ज़ीरो सो वन ज़ीरो माइनस वन दैर इज टू माइनस वन इज एक्चुअली वन दिस हैज़ बिकम ज़ीरो दिस जीरो माइनस वन दिस इज एक्चुअली वन ज़ीरो सो वी कैन राइट लाइक दिस ज़ीरो एंड दिस बिकम्स वन ज़ीरो सो वन ज़ीरो माइनस वन इज वन एंड ज़ीरो इज लाइक दर इज नो बिट हेयर सो ज़ीरो विल कम हेयर लाइक सो दिस इज लाइक दिस Okay, so similarly you can perform with uh, by taking other examples, okay, and practice uh, these addition and subtraction process methods with binary numbers. Okay. Next we come to a more important portion uh, that is. actually uh, used for performing these uh, uh, binary subtraction process actually okay so we call this as complement methods okay complement methods okay so under this we will see once complement and two's complement method okay so they are basically used for performing subtraction they can also be used for performing addition okay but look at here look at here addition is straightforward okay but subtraction is a bit complex right so there are certain methods like one's complement and two's complement method through which we can perform subtraction process okay without actually going into the subtraction method okay so this is uh, one one major advantage is that we can perform we can perform subtraction or subtraction of digital binary numbers by using addition rules or addition steps so there is no need to go through those subtraction steps okay only addition uh, rules or addition steps would be used for performing subtraction okay so this becomes a bit fancy but anyways we will we will go through the process i'll i will skip for one's complement method and i will directly go into two's complement okay and we will see this one's complement sometime later on okay so i will start with i will start with two's complement method so two's complement method for subtraction okay and these methods are actually used inside our microprocessors so these are important from a uh, computer point of view okay and because the uh, uh, processing of binary data uh, is performed in terms of two's complement uh, 
these by using these two two complements methods and especially the addition and subtraction portion okay so first uh, first of all we should know that how to obtain two's complement of a number okay for example uh, if we have a number let's say uh, let's say if we have a number uh, but the formal definition goes like this the two's complement of a binary number is obtained obtained by adding 1 to its once complement number once complement form okay so uh, let's take an example so i'll start with one example okay suppose i want to perform this uh, i want to perform subtraction that is 1101 minus 1011 so this is actually 13 and this is actually equal to 8 plus 2 10 plus 1 11 11 okay so what i will do i will start with okay this is the uh, first number this is the second number i want to subtract this second number from the first number okay so the first process is to obtain the two's complement of the second number okay so or the first step is to obtain the two's complement of this subtrahend number okay right uh, it is also called subtrahend this is also called as manuend number okay so how to obtain the two's complement of this second number 1011 so 1011 first of all we should know the ones complement of this number the ones complement is obtained simply by inverting the bits so 1 becomes 0 and 0 becomes 1 and 1 becomes 0 and 1 becomes 0 0 0 so this is ones complement of this 1011 simple invert 1 into 0 and 0 into 1 you get the ones complement okay now if we add 1 to this okay if we add 1 to this we obtain the two's complement number so 0 1 0 0 plus 1 becomes 0 1 0 1 so this is actually the two's complement number for 1 0 1 1 okay so this is the first step that is obtain two's complement of the subtrahend right then the second step is that to add the menu end or the first number and the two's complement of the subtrahend. Okay. So the menu end was uh, one one zero one. That is thirteen. And the two's complement of subtrahend is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And we have to add these. Remember this step. We have to add these two numbers. Okay. We do not have to perform subtraction because here subtraction is performed by using addition process. So we have to add these two numbers and it will result in that is 1 plus 1 is 0, carry out is 1. So 1 comes here. 
1 plus 1 is 0 carry out 1 again 1 plus 1 is 0 with carry out of 1 so this is what we get 1 0 0 1 0 ok so remember the bits original the numbers are 4 bit 1 2 3 4 but the result that we are getting this intermediate result this is the intermediate result ok uh, it generates 5 bit number and the last bit that we obtain the extra bit that we obtain the fifth bit the MSB is the carry that is extra carry generated extra carry generated right now depending on whether we get a carry out or not we can decide whether this result is correct or not ok so mm, the rule is if an extra carry is generated if an extra carry is generated ok then the final answer answer is positive and is in its final form that is the intermediate result is the final result ok and in the case in some cases we may not get any extra carry so if no extra carry no extra carry is generated then the result is then the result is negative ok and is in its tools complement form that is the intermediate result is in its tools complement form and is negative so what uh, should we do so we should find the again tools complement of the intermediate result and assign a negative sign to it of the intermediate result assign a negative sign to it ok so that is uh, for our example that we took so what did we get uh, I, will, I will write here again uh, we actually obtained uh, when we w sorry uh, let me go to the previous page it will be better ok look at here look at here so when we added the menu end with the subtra end tools complement form we got an extra carry one so the rule says that if an extra carry is generated the answer is positive and is in its final form so the answer is positive that is 2 and it is it, that is plus a positive answer and is in its final form so this is the final answer this is intermediate result and also the final result because of this extra carry generation and we should discard this extra carry in this so I will discard this extra carry generated 
and I will take this 0, 0, 1, 0 as the final answer. So therefore, final answer is 0, 0, 1, 0. A positive number that is, this is 2. And we actually wanted to because 13 minus 11 is 2. Okay. Right. Now, what happens if uh, if we get uh, no carry? Okay. So that is. Let us do the reverse process. Let us do the reverse process. That is. Let's say I want to subtract 13 from 11. Okay. That is 1011 one one minus 1101. One one. So this is actually 11 and this is 13 so i want to get uh, the, the final result should be minus 2 right so the first step is to find the two's complement of this uh, subtrahend number that is 1101 so 1101 its one's complement is 0010 zero zero zero. okay plus 1 will give me the uh, two's complement so this becomes 0, 0, 1, 1. So this is two's complement of this 1101. One, one. Now the second step is to add this uh, my new end number that is 1011 one, one with the two's complement of this subtrahend that is 0, 0, 1, 1. Right? So 1 plus 1 is 0, carry out is 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3 that is 1 and carry out 1 so 1 0 0 becomes 1 1 plus 0 is 1 okay so there is no extra carry this place is empty so I can write because the number of bits are 4 for each of these numbers and the final and the intermediate result enter Immediate answer or intermediate result is also of four bits, so no carry generated. And by rule, if the carry out is zero or no carry is generated, then the result is negative and is in its two's complement form. So I should find out the two's complement of this intermediate result okay two's complement what will first is to find out the one's complement that is zero 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 one plus one it will be zero zero one zero and attach a negative sign to this and attach a assign a negative sign to it so minus so my final answer is obtained like this and this is final answer okay so this is how we can obtain the subtraction of two numbers by using two's complement method what is the advantage is that only addition operation has to be performed we do not have to perform the subtraction process okay so the point is only addition operation has to be so the same adder hardware circuit can be used for uh, getting the subtraction of two numbers if we use this two's complement method okay so only one arithmetic operation is required and it is basically used for performing arithmetic operations right okay next is the multiplication and division so I will skip those portions for now and I will come back to these portions again but what I would like to do here is to introduce you to the uh, digital logic gates okay so uh, yes here 
you might be aware of these uh, digital logic gates from your plus two courses but anyways we have to cover this portion so this is about introduction to digital logic gates okay and we know that there are basic some basic gates and some advanced gates i will start with the basic gates the first one is and gate okay the function is f is equal to and is represented by a dot okay so the input x input x input y and f is the output and this is the diagram for and gate so this is f or output is equal to x dot y or the and of input signals okay so we have for this case two inputs x and y so we have two inputs x okay x and y here x and y and we if we have two inputs we c we can have a total combination of four if we go by binary numbers so we can have zero 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 one one zero and one one and the function f is when uh, the output is one only when both inputs are one the output is one only when both inputs are one and for all other cases the output is zero so if any of the input is zero or if any of the input is low the output will be low so it is actually ending it is demanding that the output will be high or the output will be true only when all the inputs are true okay so this is the truth table for an and gate the next gate is or gate so this is the symbol for or gate f is output x is and y are inputs we can have remember we can have more than two inputs to these gates and an or but the most simple one will be having just two inputs so f is x plus y okay in some you textbooks you, you might see this x and this vertical slash y this vertical slash will also mean or operation okay the truth table is this one so output is one when any of the input is one or the output is true if any of the input is any one of the input is true so even if any one of the input is one the output is true or one and if all the inputs are zero then output is zero okay or this is performing the or operation zero or one would be one one or zero would be zero oh sorry one one or one would be one okay if any of the condition any one of the condition is true or satisfied then output will be high okay so this is performing or operation next uh, we have inverter okay inverter which is having just one input remember an inverter can have only one input okay and this is the symbol one triangle with a little circle at the output side and f output is is equal to x prime okay x and a tick at the top of it it can in some books you may also find that like this x bar this also denotes this inverter operation so since it is having just one input and it can have only one input so we can have to we will have two conditions 0 and 1 so when x is 0 output is invert of it that is it becomes 1 and when input is 1 the output is 0 just the invert of the input signal okay so remember these truth table for these three basic gates so these three are the basic gates and we should be well versed with these uh, gates truth table and functioning right next we will see some more gates ok buffer is uh, also a gate uh, where the output is equal to input so f is equal to x 
So if x is 0, output is 0. If f is x is 1, input is 1, output is 1. A simple buffer. It will just buffer the input signal and will reproduce that output at the reproduce that signal at the output side. It performs buffering. Okay. NAND gate. Not of AND. NAND means not of AND. So if we have two inputs, the most simple NAND gate. Okay. F or the output is first perform the AND operation x dot y and then this one the NOT operation. It can also be written like this x dot y and complete bar. NOT of AND. Okay x y 0 0 0 and 0 is 0 and invert of 0 is 1 right 0 and 1 is 0 invert of 0 is 1 1 and 0 is 0 invert of 0 is 1 1 and 1 is 1 invert of 1 is 0 so this is how we obtain the truth table for this two input NAND gate okay similarly we have not of or so nor means not of or NAND means not of AND okay so OR operation and then NOT operation is we can also write like this X plus Y bar okay so the truth table will be like this 0 plus 0 is 0, invert of 0 is 1 and all others will be 0. So when you compare this NAND with uh, AND, you will find that the outputs are in complement with outputs are uh, complement of the uh, outputs are complement with that of AND gate and the output of NOR will be complement with respect to OR gate. Okay. And by the way, these two gates are also called as uh, universal gates. Why? Because any other gate or logic function or logic function can be designed or implemented can be designed or implemented just by using these gates that is NAND or NOR gates only so just by using NAND gates we can we can design any other gate or any other logic function or also we just by using uh, OR gates we can obtain we can design any any logic function or any other gate okay this we will see how to obtain other gates by using just NAND and NOR gates and because of this property they are called as they are called as universal gates okay uh, yeah next is XOR gate one a bit advanced gate this is not a basic gate this can be called as a derived gate so the symbol is like this uh, like this okay x or exclusive or so this is or gate and one uh, small you know semicircle before this ex before this or gate will make it exclusive or gate symbol the function of this f is x y bar plus x bar y and this is the symbol x and you know this small circle and a plus sign within it will denote the XOR function so this is actually X dot Y bar or or plus X bar or invert of X dot that is and Y 
okay and uh, when we construct the truth table for this XOR gate for all these four conditions when we put the first case 0 0 so x 0 dot anything would be 0 y is 0 0 and anything would be 0 so 0 plus 0 is 0 okay and similarly you, s you insert all these conditions and see that whether you get these four outputs as correct or not okay but there is one thing that we can uh, look at here this XOR gate can be used to compare inputs in the sense the output is high the output is high only when inputs are different look at here these two conditions x0 y1 they are different x1 and y0 they are different so when inputs are different output is high and when inputs are same output is 0 when inputs are same 1 1 output is 0 so in 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 this sense we can use xor gate to compare input signals okay and similarly we can have uh, x nor gate that is this one which is the invert of XOR gate okay so invert means a little bubble will come at the output side this one and the symbol will be same like this x nor gate so this will also be equal to this expression that is x y bar plus x bar y and the complete not and when you simplify this you will get x y plus x dot so x prime dot y prime plus means not addition this is or operation okay so remember these logical operations dif so you differentiate between arithmetic operations and logical operations okay so these and or not are logical operations and the ones that we see just before this that is addition and subtraction those were the arithmetic operations okay so this plus here denotes a logical or operation which is different from arithmetic addition process so you should be able to differentiate between you know these logical and arithmetic operations and it can also be represented like this x x or y bar and also like this x and circle and within the circle a dot x x naught y the truth table is this one you can verify this truth table okay again we can say that when inputs are equal the output is high and when inputs are unequal the output is low so in this sense also we can use x nor gate for comparing two signals so we will know that output is high it means that the input signals are equal and when input is output is low it means that the input signals are not equal or input signals are not same okay so in this sense we can use okay right okay so let us see let us see like I said that we can implement we can design any other gate by using universal gates right so let us see how to do that so implementation of AND gate using universal gates remember the universal gates are NAND and NOR gate right 
So first, let us try to have AND gate operation using NAND gate. Okay, so using NAND gates, the AND gate can be implemented by using two NAND gates in the below fashion. So this is the first NAND gate. Remember, there is a small bubble here that might not be visible, but I will. So these are actually NAND gate. So this is NAND one and this is NAND two. Okay, so in <coughs> inputs are X and Y and output is F. So let us try to verify. So I will delete these. Okay. So keep in mind this is NAND1, this is NAND2 gate. The output of NAND1 is connected to the two inputs of NAND2. So here the output is connected to the two inputs of NAND2. Let's say if this is x dash and this is y dash so x dash and y dash are acting as the input to the NAND2 gate so the connection is like this okay the connection is like this okay so Okay, um, so x and y here and x dash and y dash here. So let's start with this first case. So when x is zero and y is zero, NAND zero and zero is zero. Inverse of this is one, so we will get a one here. So x dash x dash will be one and y dash will also be one. So one and one is one, and inverse of one is zero, so we will get a zero here. So f is 0 like this and similarly you can uh, verify for other conditions 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 and you will see that the outputs are coming like this and these outputs are nothing but matching with that of truth table for these given conditions so this truth table confirms that this particular circuit is acting as a and acting as an AND gate okay okay right now we can have uh, we can implement we can implement we can implement the same we can design the same AND gate using OR gate also okay so this is the implementation of AND gate using only OR gates look at this sorry the uh, NOR gates so this is OR and with small bubble here output side which may not be visible clearly but these are actually NOR gates okay X and Y are the inputs X and y so look the same input is fed fed to these two inputs for this nor gate so x is coming here x is came coming here same same y is coming here and here so let's verify this first if x is let's say i will take this condition uh, 1 0 if x is 1 and y is 0 so this is also 1 and this is also 0 now 1 or 1 is 1 invert of 1 is 0 so I'll get a 0 here 0 or 0 is 0 invert of it is 1 1 okay now 0 or 1 is 1 invert of 1 is 0 so I'll get a 0 here like this similarly you can verify and you will see that uh, these outputs will come and output is high only when the inputs are high this one and for all other cases the output is low so this is the function of an AND gate or implementation of or the design of AND gate 
using just OR gates. So it will require three OR gates, and it had required it required just two NAND gates to design this AND gate. Okay, right. Similarly, we can design uh, OR gate also uh, by using these universal gates. So this is implementation of OR gate using NAND gate. This one. So it requires one, two, and three NAND gates to design one OR gate. Okay, and uh, and in terms of OR gate, it will require. Uh, Yeah, it requires just uh, two NOR gates to implement a uh, an OR gate. Okay, so let me verify this. So this is this is OR gate using NOR gates. So these are NOR gates. This is let's say this is NOR one, this is NOR two. So let's say I will test this one one one. So when input is one and one, one and one or one is one. Invert is zero, so it comes here zero and zero. Zero or zero is zero. Invert is one. So this is correct. We verify these three conditions, and this truth table is identical to the truth table of an OR gate. So it is actually an OR gate using NOR gates. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, the OR gate implementation using NOR gate, right? Similarly, we can design NOT gate also using these universal gates, and this is important, students, because uh, universal gates are uh, special gates, ah, because any other function can be implemented by using just these one type of gates. So, using this connection, feeding the same input to these two inputs of this NAND gate. If this is zero, this is zero. So this becomes zero and zero. Zero and zero is zero. Invert is one, and this is one 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 and one is one. Invert is zero. So this performs as an inverter, right? Similarly, we can design sim in the same fashion, same connection. Okay. Inverter by using NOR gate. The connections are same, right? So just by using one or NOR gate or one NAND gate, we can design an inverter. Okay, and we can uh, uh, we can continue like this, and we can design uh, some complex gates also, like this XOR gate using universal gates. So I will give this as a homework to design or study this with. XOR and XNOR gate using universal or NAND NOR gates. So take this as homework question, right? Okay, so we can go on like this. We can design any logic function by using NAND and NOR gates, and we will see further. We will see further how to extend this concept to design some complex logic functions. Okay, so uh, I'll stop here, and we will continue from here in the next class, right? So.